Welcome to Trail Manners, the podcast so dedicated to mountain trails and running that they broadcast out of a 78 Volkswagen bus in the mountains. Who does that? Eric and Joel are your hosts and will bring you the trail life as you may have not heard it before. You hear about everything from gear reviews, nutrition to keep you upright and moving forward, and they'll even bring guests into the bus for conversations that you won't hear anywhere else. It's time for some running adventures on a higher elevation. The old 78 Volkswagen bus is fired up and headed to the mountains. Here are your hosts for Trail Manners, proudly representing the 801 with their passion and love for the trails, Eric Manning and Joel Hatch. Welcome to the Trail Manners Podcast, episode number 45, another one part of our Outdoor Retailers Show series. Today, we are talking with Mr. I Run Far, Brian Powell. Spoiler alert, stay tuned to the end for a cool contest to maybe win a book from Mr. Powell. If this is your first time listening, then thanks for coming. The Trail Manners Podcast is produced every week for your enjoyment, and show notes are found at trailmanners.com. Come back often, and please feel free to add the podcast to your favorite RSS feed or iTunes. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Trail Manners. All links are in the show notes. Now let's get after it. Okay, welcome back to the Trail Manners Podcast. We are still here at Outdoor Retailer Show, part of our special. Long day. Long, yours is non Joel. Long day here. It's not? No, you're, you're not working here. How are we doing now? Well, I'm... There we go. We got you. So sure. It's been a long day. Had some great shows. We just left uh, the Soonto booth. Soonto. Soonto. Grabbed Soon-to. a couple PBRs, and now... Yes. Our next show... We've wrangled. We've wrangled. Let's face it. Let's face it. it living legend, right? <laughs> I mean, let's, let's be serious here. Yeah, I think so. I think that... Well, at least in our little niche sport it is we've got mr brian powell yes hello folks how are you today great man so this is a this is a treat for us we've been trying to get on the show for a while but of course you're a global traveler yeah yeah get a lot of miles under these feet uh throughout the course of the year we have been trying for a while i think since probably last october yeah Yeah. really meet up yeah and then we got you know the book was launched we tried to get you then schedules didn't mix and then of course you had that uh Little, little race. race in the San Juans. Yeah. Oh, that little thing, yeah. Yeah. So let's just crack the nut, get right into it. Crack the nut. Right? Get right into it. Hard Rock. Hard Rock. Oh, boy. This yeah. year. Yeah, this year. This year. Yeah, this this year. year. So you went down there, and you were there for a while. Yeah, I got down there uh, middle of May and got to spend basically two months based in Silverton, uh, minus a week out, out at Western States. Um, right. But, yeah, got plenty of chance to train uh, on that train, and then the last couple weeks get on the course a bunch. Um, just, it's a treat to get to run in the San Juans, whether it's for one day or one weekend or two months, uh, right. take any chance you can to get to run down there. Well, so. just, just the sheer magnitude of being in Silverton where you just look around and you crack your neck looking at these beautiful <laughs> mountains, right? It's awesome. Yeah. Like there's so many spectacular places around there and I just end up running from town or like <laughs> driving out to the nearest gulch, like going out to Cunningham because it's right there. Be, right. Because it, I could do it five times and enjoy the beauty of it every single time. Like, it's just the the scale and the the wildflowers and that time of year it's so dynamic because literally I would go up to the same point every day or every other day on a huge climb and I'd take a picture of watching the snow melt oh, each yeah. day oh, yeah. and it was just like amazing to see that the the, the change in and then seeing the flowers come out and then seeing some of the grasses die, like just becoming intimately knowledgeable of a very small section of, of land is beautiful. Whether you're in the San Juans or you're home, just yeah. getting that connection. I love it. Well, and, and we say home. I mean, Silverton for a while was your home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, essentially. Right? It, yeah. I mean, working out of the, the coffee shops, it's such a small town. Of course, you probably know everybody. Everybody yeah. knows you. Yeah. You got other hard rockers down there training, getting getting their vert in. What was your training block like for you know, the two months you were down there prior to the race, minus, say, the Western States week. Yeah, I mean, I had basically a five-week training block, like two weeks, a down week, and then two more hard weeks before going to Western States. And uh, I think I got up to about the peak week was probably about 130 miles wow. with 53,000 feet of oh climbing. Oh, my goodness. Jeez. That's so, awesome. And it felt good. I mean, I felt good throughout. Like, it was right. just amazing. Like, when I get up to that kind of volume, which is the highest I've ever been, probably mileage or vert, like, I'm very aware of what how my body feels. And right. Like, I'm willing to back off at any point. Like if things aren't going right, if my energy's not good. Right. I would have 
candid at 80 miles and sure. 30,000 feet. And like, it's kind of nice to have the flexibility and, and experience to, to know everything's going well. You can keep pushing it and right. then stop when you shouldn't be going any further. <laughs> so what was your expectation heading into the race? I mean, obviously the training was serious. I yeah. mean, you're down there for that length of time, the mileage, the vert. It wasn't just like, hey, I'm going to go run hard rock. It was like, no, I'm, I'm going to race hard rock. So what was kind of your expectation going into the race and kind of how did it unfold as, uh, as a finish? Yeah, I thought, uh, I thought I was definitely in better shape than last year. Um, just doing some of the climbs that I had done. La I mean, again, I tend to go to the same trails and same areas and sort of do them over because they're easy access and I right. like them. Um, so I was probably doing them... 15 to 20 percent faster than I was last year especially on the climb side so I knew I was way fitter um so I guess I was thinking I was definitely in like 30 hour shape and right conditions are so important <laughs> at hard rock that you don't want to like put a, a lo like the low ball time on there but it could have been 29 it could have been a little faster than that I don't know I was fit um went out uh first 60 miles at hard rock this year were a dream like I, I probably took in that span 900 pictures, a thousand pictures. <laughs> oh, this year? This year. Like, <laughs> I'm just like going and having fun. And I ran with Grant Guys from New Zealand for a while. I'd see Emma Roca. I was with Anna Frost for the first like 10 miles. Like, I was just running with cool people and hanging out and chatting and taking pictures and sharing the experience. Yeah. Sharing the experience and taking in the experience, which is right. super important. Like, looking around, looking at the flowers, just having a grand time. Um, and then I had one little mentally low point coming out of Telluride, like 30, 35 miles in, but I got through that. I was just mental. Um, it was really hot going into you, right? For, I mean, it wasn't 115 cause it's super high, right. but when you're even at 80 or 90 degrees at 70, 700 feet, which is the lowest point in the course or, right. or higher, you really feel it. Like I've had that experience at Leadville before. Um, everybody was just feeling feeling their stomachs go, and I definitely got that. I felt good going into you, Ray, and then coming out. There's kind of like the three worst miles of the course. <laughs> it's super low. It was like I don't know if it was five o'clock in the evening. So it was like kind of the heat part peaking. of it. part of the day, right? Yeah, there's no yeah. like air movement down there. <laughs> Can't hide just, from the sun. <laughs> it was just miserable. My stomach definitely went. And, yeah. Um, but I knew like I, I knew like, that was a time to try to manage it. So I backed off the pace. I was drinking some, and there's these huge switchbacks above the Bear Creek Tunnel, and I kind of suffered through those. But as we, the trail starts flattening out a little bit and goes through the, where the Bear Creek Trail is carved into the rocks, just got to start collecting myself. And as we, it was awesome. As I was climbing, I kept feeling better and better. Uh, definitely wow. got back to where I could eat and drink, and any time we'd come to a – once we got to where there were streams across the trail, I would either just, you know, wet my core and my sleeves down or I would, right. yeah, I'd wash my face off or just to get, like, my head wet yeah. um, and really was actively cooling. And, yeah, again, as I kept climbing, I kept feeling better and better, which rarely yeah, happens. Right. That's Usually it's <laughs> the other way around. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I passed uh, like Emma Roca going up the higher part of that climb and just rolled down into Grouse Gulch feeling like, all right, I had a little hiccup in the heat of the day, but I'd Really, my goal was to get to like Grouse and then Sherman, feeling good, and ready to then ready I, I, to hopefully run better than last year toward the end. And right. unfortunately, about ten minutes out climbing out of Grouse, going up toward Handy's Peak, the high point of the course, yeah, the wheels just came off. Like I couldn't eat anymore, and I don't know if I some had somewhere between five hundred and a thousand calories over the last seventeen hours. Oh jeez, which uh, is not enough. Less than ideal. I guess yeah. I had a, a big bottle of Coke. Coming out of the final checkpoint, Cunningham, but yeah, because my my tank was at empty, right? Um, which was surprisingly okay for most of the descents. Like I, my legs were great throughout the race, and I could descend not quickly because I was sort of low energy, but I could run. Right. Um, flats were pretty miserable, and climbs. I literally at the end of the like, race, I can't kiss the rock and I tell him Dale. Like I think I got a tattoo of wildflowers on my back from laying down so many <laughs> times. Because I mean, I don't, I don't, I didn't count, but. If I didn't lay down a hundred times, I, wow. I'm, I'm wow. pretty sure I did. Like, and it was like walk for a couple minutes, right? Lay down for ten or fifteen seconds. It wasn't like I was like laying in misery, feeling sorry for myself. I was like doing what I could, I recovering. I mean, it, 
I felt like I was recovering faster and laying down for 15 seconds than just right. standing, standing feet. hunched over. <laughs> yeah. Like, I wasn't going to stand there straight out. Like, no. We're just going to shut it down for, yeah, and relax. Yeah. And, like, going up handies, it was, like, going, it was night. There was, the moon wasn't up. And I would just look up at the stars, and it was beautiful. And, like, it was kind of an awesome experience in that, like, the tank was empty. I could have been, like, miserable and hating life and hating being out there and, like, why am I doing this? No, nah, I just look up at the stars and be like, this is rad. Like, yeah, you're in the moment there. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's why you do it, really. Yeah, you know? like going through Pole Creek, uh, you know, right around sunrise, like looking at the, the Alpenglow on the mountains and like just like I'm moving, I'm walking slow on flat. I wish this is where I'd really sort of train to hopefully be running and, right. and doing well, but that's not the case, but I'm still going to. You're going to still enjoy, really this. enjoy this. Yeah. Well, that's and, what it's about. And yeah. And then there was like three of us. There was uh, Timmy Olsen, Scott Jaime, and Nick Curry, who we were going either very slow or very, very slow <laughs> <laughs> uh, for like hours and hours and hours. And like one of us would pass the other and then back. And like it was just like, and it was awesome because like we were passing each other, but no one was like racing one right another. it was always it was like come on buddy your stomach's gonna feel better in a little bit like keep going keep moving it's like who had it together at the moment right <laughs> no who wasn't as bad <laughs> at true the moment. it's that degree of just feeling kind of rotten right <laughs> yeah, yeah i mean aside from like once once timmy uh olsen got about 10 miles from the finish i'm pretty sure he Oh, a match got lit under him, and he just like took off like a rocket. But right, yeah. Well, when you're hanging out with guys in the mountains in misery, that's misery. That's misery. That's a pretty. That's a pretty. Pretty good group of people to be around. I know too. <laughs> but like with Emma Roca, like one of the best, toughest female ultra runners in the world, and like we're doing this ridiculously slow calm up handies together. <laughs> like I would walk faster than her, and then like lie down for thirty seconds. <laughs> She'd be like doing this super slow, like. One like exaggerated one leg lift up, <laughs> plop it down the other leg. Like walking on the moon. She was moon like more consistent, and like I was kind of like, I don't have a slower gear, so I'm just gonna walk my r- pretty slow gear and then lay down. And lay lay down. Just like <laughs> put it in neutral for me. Yeah, that's we, we're awesome. Just like all you're doing is like cheering each other on and, la- and laughing at it, like the situation. Like, oh man, this is so. You slow. have to. So I this is gonna happen this. for the next hour. Or so the next hour, <laughs> the next like seven hours, yeah. right? No, I did try to lay down at. Uh, I got to uh, Burroughs Park, the other side of Handy's, and tried to try to get some food down. I ended up getting a, actually a couple cups of soup and laid down in the back of a truck for 45 minutes, uh, trying to sleep. I don't know if I actually slept, and then got up to like somebody leaving the aid station laughing. I actually thought it was AJW, and I was hoping to like just say hi as he like <laughs> right. went on, and it ended up being Nick Curry and his pacer, and um, ended up catching them, passing them pretty quick. And again, they passed me again later, but like just got going again, and that was the only time I really stopped for any length of time, I guess. In yeah, Sherman was probably five or ten minutes. Uh, Pole Creek was maybe ten or fifteen. Cunningham was no time. It was just kind of like Maggie. I literally just ran through the aid station. It was like right. seventeen hours ago, forty miles, and there was maybe an hour of aid station stop. It was just like <laughs> this is as fast as I can move. <laughs> <laughs> so then, you, what, I mean, what was the the finish time you ended up with? Thirty three hours. And so that was good, like. I mean, it's hard rock. To last year? It's hard rock, right? Last year was thirty-one thirty. So okay, you know, okay, it's slower. And then, uh, like place-wise, you were still fifteenth. Fifteenth. So it's actually right? a place higher than last year, and it was definitely a stronger field than la- even last year. So I mean, you're not racing it's for place at that time. It's relative. Like, to was this direction easier or harder? Was this the, considered the easy? It's considered the easy direction. Okay. okay, But I think the heat, aside from a couple the guys, because well, that's rushed. rare there. Yeah. It's rare um, there. Wrecked everybody. I mean, again, I was ninety minutes slower in a place higher. Yeah. Uh, Tells you something about, about what the conditions were, right? Yeah. So uh, this is a question we haven't. I don't know if we've asked any of our hard rock finishers. We've had a few on the show. Okay. But this is something because there's a lot of us that haven't been in the race that yeah. would like to someday. Yeah. What What is that feeling like when you come down, you turn the corner, come down the street by the school, and you get a, you actually get to kiss the rock? I mean, what What's kind of that feeling for people out there that are waiting for that or, or think about it? What's it's, that feeling it's like? It's joy, and it's like pride and like in in the best meaning of the sense and not like uh, ego and all yeah. that it's like wow internally i did that right like it, it, it's a yeah no it's it's a really incredible feeling like you know even if you've run a bunch of other hundreds or and run longer races or long run other tough races like there's something about that it's hard to put into words how difficult hard rock is in just the all the vertical, all of the chance of weather, whether it's hot or bad weather, the elevation, any, the elevation. Yeah. Um, 
it's way harder than the sum of the parts. And right. as you're out there, like training went super well for me. Like every training one felt good. Yeah. How, 30 mile runs felt good. Doing 10,000 feet of climb on zero calories felt good. And then you're out there and you put each of those sections together and you're like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my eyes were bigger than my stomach that's, on this that's one. That's, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what I remember. That's not what I and again, it's not like in a horrible experience kind of way. It's just like kind of humbling yeah. right. to be out there. And that's where that pride comes from, coming through the other side of that really humbling experience on the course and internally, because you're, you're, you're internally humbled. Like right. you think you're capable of X and you're just broken down and getting through that. Like it was for this year, like having taken a, a time out during the bear a couple years ago, Purposely, because I just I was getting a hard rock qualifier, and I took a six hour nap and had a, just having a fun day. Like I could have done the same at Hard Rock this year. Right. Just, I mean, I was even feeling awful. I was I still finished fifteen hours under the cutoff. I could have right. gone and taken <laughs> an eight hour nap in yeah. Sherman <laughs> and, been okay. and like still felt finished. way 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 better at, right. at the end. But like to more or less just go on throughout the race right. felt good. I remember when you took that, well, took one of your breaks at the Bear, because I, I was running it the same year, and we were kind of similar pace, and coming out of Cali, going up this double-track road, and I see you, you're off the side. I thought you were taking a leak, but you're out there just sitting there looking out the view. <laughs> and I was like, man, he's enjoying himself <laughs> <laughs> and all, all i can think of is like god this is so hot today this is terrible and then we're going down 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 into some like those little hollows that you go through and I'm, i was running with mark tanaka and i've never seen anybody fall as hard as he did i thought he broke something internally <laughs> and then you come just <laughs> dancing by us and i'm like he's really having fun <laughs> and that it was really that was a turning experience because i had yeah. a couple yeah, a couple down years, years and tr like personally because I like of work like I was just right. doing You're buried in work. I was buried and I buried myself and right. like I mean that one has to learn how to say no or manage expectations internally and all that right. and there was just a couple years where that was not the case and right I dropped out of Western State or it's the year in 2013 the year before the bear right uh, just a, a lot of it was just bad mental place and then I tried to make it up at Tahoe because I was really fit three weeks later whatever and right had even a worse mental experience unrelated to running like I was just right. really mentally low uh, and then just to really allow myself to flip that switch at the bear was because awesome. you looked like you were having fun I was and I have it Every race I've run since. I wow. mean, literally, like, he was just, uh, when you come up out of Cali, it's this nice service road, and you can power hike the mess out of it, and Brian's just off to the side, and you're like, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> this is kind of a race, but he's just having fun. I'm like, right on. Because I, I remember at that point, you were, you were kind of like down and out, and I was like, good for him, right? That yeah, was cool I, to I see. had a lot of that during hard rock. I mean, I, there was times when I was singing, running down the course. Like, right. Generally, after running through some music, like, like up in Virginia, it's like there was—I think Rock, I, I know Rock the Cast Ball was playing. So I was just <laughs> oh, I descending that, that vir the Virginia slope, just singing Rock the Cast Ball, the like top of your lungs, yeah, like totally. Phil Lowry loud, <laughs> probably <laughs> Phil Lowry loud. <laughs> <laughs> it was turned up to eleven. And I was having fun, just kind of dancing down the the mountain. Right on, that's so cool. I I mean, I highly like. It's so easy to get caught up in trying to perform, not whether it's for an external display or for internal satisfaction. And, like, that's all fun. And, like, right. I trained my ass off for – I don't know if I can say that on trail You just did it. Yeah. You just did it. Yeah. Listen, that would be Beep. the least – that's the least <laughs> of our worries. We, yeah. Tur Turtle Miller was on the other day, and we, we were talking about dong on dong love. So Yeah, yeah. fair enough, fair yeah. enough. So, yeah. I mean, like, you can train and work really hard, and uh, – and it's great to have that fulfillment of like a good performance, right? But don't forget to have fun along the way. Yeah. And like I know we cover like on I Run Far, we cover the front of the pack, at, like when, in the races we cover, and we give a lot of technical information on like training and right. But like the 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 fun aspect and the beauty aspect right. and the community aspect are like what it's all about. Like having the tools to train well can make for a better experience because you're yeah. not suffering for seventy miles. You can suffer for thirty. Like, right. That's. There's there's some point to training, but like, right. and yeah, if you're not if you can't stop and get it, on, there's no chin scraper on Wasatch anymore. But you, if you don't get to the yeah. top of the first climb at Wasatch right. and turn around and look, you're missing out. If you don't you do really that Western are. States, if you're not up in the high country in Hard Rock, right, enjoying it or taking 
just even though you're not you're taking photos, the bear. Yeah. The, the, the aspens that are turning during oh, the bear. Beautiful. Just, Those man, are magic up there. Fantastic. Well, like, and, so, and sometimes, too, that can literally change your mood. Yeah, right? so absolutely. If you're, in, if you're in a bad spot and you stop for a minute and take a look around you, and even for a brief second you internalize that, that mm-hmm. could change. That could flick a switch and, hey, man, well, but, right. And there's a total, like, quiver of those things. It's it's look, taking in the scenery. Nice it's, quiver. It's, I, like that. it's I like that. smiling to yourself. It's yep. singing out loud. It's listen, maybe it's just listening to music. Maybe it's giving a competitor a high five or a volunteer right. nice or jobs helping somebody else out. Yeah. Right. Uh, all, if you externalize that towards somebody else, it reflects back at you. Oh, right. big time. Um, so Isn't that why we almost got into this in the first place? Because yeah. it's so much fun. It is. Right? It is. It, well, it is. It's and like, so it's funny. Like when I train, like, you, it, it's funny because, like, again, you have the races and you train for those. But right. some of the things I like best about training for a 100-mile race is that, A, I get all the fun time out in training. But then afterward... I feel like I can run all day without any effort and explore such beautiful places. Yeah. Like it's yeah. an enabler for really my n- no one ever knows about running like, yeah. that I enjoy the most. <laughs> well, it's, so. it's seeing places that most people don't get the opportunity to see. True. It's, it's being a part of something bigger than yourself right. and mm-hmm. sharing the experience with people, let's face it, are like-minded. You could be any occupation walk of life but you're basically doing the same thing it doesn't yeah. matter your pace your speed your anything you're, you're all you're experiencing the same trail yeah and and you know we kind of did a segue there i mean brian talks about having fun and doing it for the right reasons and you know we brought up but you changed the dynamic a lot with i run far i mean you did. i mean you were God, like i'm not going to say how many years ago because i probably don't oh, even remember but remember, we, you we were my this, first source really i right. mean I, me and we Scott had this Heimer conversation you remember yeah. this conversation we were at snow basin running yeah when you first came out with the website yeah, and we're like and hey, we, we, checked we that were out? worried because we're like, oh man he quit his job yeah to do this full time <laughs> yeah we're like that's gonna be cool but oh can How's you do it? it yeah because we loved what you were putting <laughs> yeah. out yeah but you were for those that don't know you were uh, a, a lawyer yeah right yeah. in yeah. washington dc right on yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Have, White you, House. have yeah. you recovered from that yet i'm still recovering to still one day at a time <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but so and i remember because you made your way from the east coast and um you came through at the time it was the pocatello 50 yeah, and that's the yeah. first time me and you had officially met. I yeah, because you you were manners commenting on I run far. Yeah, right. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so we officially met, and I gave you a ride, and we talked and stuff. But you're still making your trek westward mm-hmm. from from making this endeavor. And this was how many years ago? I mean, this would have been May 2009. Yeah, 2009. Yeah. So that's seven years ago. So a lot of people that are getting into the sport now, I mean, they look at I run far, and it's like that's the norm for them. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. like their resource. But back when. 2007, because you had a blog. Yeah, you know, I mean, it was a personal blog. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's how you got your resources. You had the in the sidebar. There was the blog roll, right? Yeah. Just everybody that you used to follow, and you used to be like, "Can't wait for this guy to come out with this race report." Yeah, right. right? But now so. you had then there's 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 aggregate of information. Yeah, cause, comes along because we even gave. I mean, through hard. I mean, it's it's been going on for years, but Hard Rock this year, perfect example. I mean, yeah. no one tunes in <laughs> to a lot of these uh, websites of races anymore. Western states, Hard Rock. You can have a live tracker. You can have this. All you need to do is, is I run far on Twitter. On Twitter, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. It's freaking play by play. This to yeah. me is how like radio was when people. My my dad would listen to baseball games yeah. before TV. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, was just joking with somebody earlier today. Like they were saying that they were listening to Hard Rock. Or they, they, yeah, they just start listen or they follow the Twitter feed on like right. Hard Rock or Western States or whatever. And I, I was just wondering, like, is there some ex- like accessibility mode that on your iPhone that actually reads text? And there is. And I was wondering if it does it automatically on notifications. Could you literally just turn yeah, it into a play by play? Like, be on your run, so you don't have to keep checking your phone. Yeah, because like, that's all there has to be. Refresh, that would refresh. be so cool. That would yeah, be cool. Yeah, I might have to. I might have to look we into that, like, just to see if that's possible. That'd but be neat. as long as I would make sure I don't turn that on, because that's the last. Like, it's funny that one of the few things I tell, like at Hard Rock, both Megan and I were running, and it's one of the two times we've ever had a major race coverage where we both weren't right. able to work that day. Well, one of us wasn't able to work that day, um, and I kind of tell like the awesome volunteers are helping making this coverage possible. Like, I you know I look forward to seeing you out there. Like, I'm gonna give you a high five. You know, you know I'm there. Do not talk to me about work that day because that's like the last. Like, I actually had it coming out, come up, running the Telluride. That there was something, something that I wrong. had set up a little incorrectly on our live coverage page, and I literally get on WhatsApp, and I'm talking to, sending messages to my friend Mallory in Argentina, being like, 
can you set you know can you include I run far in our uh, simple Twitter feed because whatever like just like a technical aspect that I couldn't do on my phone I'm like this is not what I want to be thinking about right race. now. Oh, I, was, I was literally exactly. running down the road in a dirt road <laughs> in a Telluride, like <laughs> oh. trying to fix something on Iron Far. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I tell you, we, we just loved it. And we kept saying, man, check out I Run Far. Check out I Run Far. In fact, when I first came out with this podcast, I even sent you a message saying, hey, I'm just letting you know this is what we're doing. And Yeah, we didn't want to step on anybody's yeah, toes, but you're still, right? I mean, you literally are for, for trail run. I don't care what anybody does going forward i mean this is the resource what you yeah, have it is. I mean, you've Thank got you. amazing amazing group of people writing yeah. blogs and posts and informative stuff that even as a veteran or someone who's done trail running for a while you get these sweet tidbits yeah from all so, over the country well, all over the world mm, sorry about yeah. that yeah country <laughs> so, anymore that's a nice segue yeah so he he has a book out He's got two books out. Well, he does have two books. I got yeah. his first one. The yeah. second one I still haven't got. I hope I'm going to win that. So so here we got. We got the first book you did, Relentless, Relentless, Relentless Forward, Forward Progress. Progress. Sorry. Yeah. I got my autographed copy, by the way. Oh, uh, I don't but I won't, that. But I won't say anything about that. So you came out with that book a couple years ago. Three. Yeah. It's uh, a good question. Oh, I know when it was. It was uh, April 2011. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. That's five years. Yeah. Five like, years ago? Goodness. Over five years ago. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's crazy. I got to finish it. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm on like the third Your next chapter. race is going to go way better. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> but, but the cool thing, though, is you and Megan yeah. uh, have worked on a new book for how, how long did you work on this new book? Somewhere between 18 and 20 months. Wow. Yeah. And uh, name of the book. It's uh, give a, Where the Road Ends, A Guide to Trail Running. And it's, Megan kind of put it well, it's, it's the sequel. I mean, it's, it's the prequel to Relentless Forward Progress. It's not an ultra running book. I mean, we, it's mentioned in there, but yeah. right. it's specifically a introduction introductory guide to trail running right um the first book kind of assumed people had done some running whether it was doing some road running or had casually trail run or whatever and this one assumes someone has done no running um and it probably assumes that they've been active it's not somebody who's you know coming couch. off the couch after 30 years but yeah. right you know, mountain biker hiker climber road runner um maybe um but yeah somebody who really wants to start from the beginning or it gives somebody the tools to start from the beginning if they want. Right. Or somebody that's been messing around on their own. Maybe they have experimented with some trail running. And you really can put one front foot in front of the other. But, you know, maybe it teaches them how to be a better steward of the environment while trail running. Maybe right. they can pick up tips on navigation so they feel more comfortable right. going from that 10-mile loop that they know in the park behind yep. their house to a, a fun 20-mile loop up in, up in the deep Wasatch somewhere. Yeah, or right. somewhere. Went to. So, yeah. yeah Somebody who's been ultra running for 10 years, it might, it might be fun for them to pick it up and they might get a couple new perspectives because we can always learn from other perspectives. Oh, for sure. And Absolutely. That's one thing that came up when Megan and I were writing this. So we kind of split up the chapters more or less, but we had so much back and forth. There were plenty of times where it was just sort of editorial right. guidance and there was plenty of times where, or a number of times where we contradicted, you know, had contradictory viewpoints and had to then work through what, sort of a consensus or if there are two different approaches to a, right. a certain problem so that was fun well and, and again i mean it's a great book again i got an autographed copy thank you oh, so much man. i know right i'm all on this stuff i'm not kidding but what, what so we, we did got a couple copies right so what we did and we'll keep talking about the book but i'm gonna get this out at the end of the show we're gonna t tell you about a contest yeah okay so we got three extra books because Ooh. this is how cool this book is so i have three brand new never been opened books that we're going to give away in a contest for some lucky listeners right, All right. So we'll announce a contest i'm not going to do it right now we'll announce a contest but you gotta listen to the end of the show that's right man that's how we get to the end it's like to be continued stuff you gotta <laughs> tune in Doo -doo -doo. yeah but the book itself i mean like you said i i've been i wouldn't call myself you know a veteran but i've been running ultras for a while for sure but there's stuff in there that makes you think mm -hmm. you're right so I, I read the book and i'm like oh yeah or hey i should try that and I think that's what you said. It's a lot of what it is perspective because we all have, um, what do you call them, like people that we talk to to get advice. You know, your mentors right. of trail running. Totally. You know, yeah. everybody has their key guy or yep. key girl. But then you have this outlier, and sometimes you don't always like to ask the question because you're like, I'm going to feel silly if I ask this. But what you cover in both books, the prequel, you call it, is tons of information. There's some great uh, stories from other runners. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just like you guys wrote the book. I know, like Dylan and some other people have. Uh, it, it, yeah, we we definitely talked to some uh, some experts. Yeah, so. you know, the people that have different perspectives that are accomplished runners, but just genuine good people. And we we definitely, it's interesting because we wrote a lot of the book and and separately went to these sort of experts. And there's times where I wouldn't say things are contradictory because they're not, but 
where they give a new perspective, a new light, because there's right. a different way to approach descending, let's say. Right. Like, you can look at sort of like technical form, but even just just approaches, and it's awesome to have that. And it's very, like you're saying, like you, you sort of maybe get one mentor, right. uh, whether it's ultra running or trail running, or one or two or three, and or it might be three people in a group, and they've kind of developed this, you know, collective set of knowledge. Right. But to get somebody else from outside that base. That helps. Uh, it really does. And, like, I purposely in my own running, like experiment and like try to change things. And like, right. Oh, that totally doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. oh, that, that did, but you know, it's, I do a lot of that. Totally I mean, doesn't work. It's, <laughs> it's, I think it's important. Like it's even for a veteran trail runner to, to try new things. And maybe they go back to what was the old, like right. for one thing, Megan still uses like S caps all the time in her running. Like she does a ton of electrolytes and kind of right. r- routinely. And over the years I've gotten to, I didn't take a single one during hard rock. Right. You're I mean, I had like two in my, my little baggie in case like I needed it, but I, I didn't, and it's not that I think, you know, one shouldn't take electrolytes, and it's just, like, that's where I've experimented, and I found, like, right. I have a little less prone to sort of catastrophic nausea from, like, accidentally taking two S-caps or something and, and not having enough water. Like, my right. mistake, but, like, I know that I have that risk of making that mistake, so I've right. kind of eliminated that as an option. Well, and we've, <laughs> ta- we've talked about it on the show. It's not like ultra running, even though it's... It's been around for a while. It's not like there's been a gazillion studies. No, there hasn't. Not like, you know, ultra running and triathlon kind of, they've grown up together at the same rate, right? But there's been more research done with triathlons. The money's there. The money's there. The team aspect, the sponsorship. So when you talk about having these different viewpoints. Those guys have got it kind of dialed in, right? Yeah, for sure. But I also think on the science side, like so many of the endurance studies, regardless of what they are, what sport exactly they're with, there's such small ends, like the, the yeah. number of subjects. It's Definitely. ten people, and it's yep. a hypothesis. And yeah, untrained th- th- athletes. You can have usually. five studies, and one comes up with a positive. The four that tested some other, you know, there's a bias, a confirmation bias for yeah. sure. And like, so I mean, I, I I see a lot of those as just being hypothesis forming at this point. Right. And even if there are the studies out there, I think it's just important to to keep experimenting on your own. Well, Absolutely. Cause, cause, uh, well, let's, I mean, look at the variables. Everybody's different one. Yeah, for sure. You've got your, you know, how you train, where you train, your age, your gender, your weight, your nutrition, your job, your you've stress, been for, your what family. Kind of you have done. <laughs> your consistency. Yeah. yeah. Running. So, I mean, yep. there's so many variables. Like, you could sit and say, you know, I mean, we're at Outdoor Retailer Show. There's nutrition supplements everywhere. everywhere. Right. And they're popping up. All the time, right like next to the stand-up paddle boards. Yeah, right. Next to oh, <laughs> oh my gosh! But it's what's up? Yeah, yeah. What's up? What's up? <laughs> really? <laughs> but it, but it's what works for you, right? Because you're talking about S caps, and there's brands I cannot use. Like if I have one of a certain brand, it <laughs> does make me <laughs> nauseous. Noon. You know, and not, it, not, I, I still carry. It's S-cap. another it's story. Not like it's, it's an S cap thing. Yeah. It's like I, those are what are my emergency. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Electrolyte stash. But That's yeah, your blankie, like, right? You know. Yeah. But with with your book, I think what it does is just gives you perspectives. It does, and it it doesn't mean. You know, because you talked about it, you know, from the ultra running side or elite runner side, but it's more of a getting used to it or getting into it. Yeah, everybody saw it. Yeah, everybody saw it. Like, it's hard, like, it's hard to write up a training plan for that because there is no one certain way. And I actually firmly believe that there shouldn't be, I mean, working with a, you know, a coaching client individually is totally different. Like, you sometimes a publisher insists you put a, you know, a schedule in a book because people want schedules in a book, but like, that's just an, an approximation. Like, yep. Right. You have to give people the tools to kind of make up their own training. And I don't think, like, in terms of, like, speed work or this or that, there's no one right way to train. And basically the way you're going to get the be- 95% of people are going to get their best results are staying healthy, staying motivated, and staying consistent. Yeah, I mean, consistent. Like, yeah. I don't, like, maybe you enjoy doing fast, you know, two-minute hill repeats. Maybe you enjoy doing a hard, hour-long tempo. Maybe you right. just like to go out for eight hours every saturday like if you keep doing that and you manage to not overdo it right like you're going to get better and yes you you can quickly become better by adding some of the other components but if you don't enjoy them like again if you're not enjoying it what's the point what right? yeah like because you, so you drop 10 minutes on your 50 mile time yeah, and you're that's nothing and you're miserable and you're, you're miserable <laughs> like forget yeah. that because right? Right. No. that's 10 minutes on a one race compared to like your you know 12 week plus block of misery i could be coming i could you know get faster by going and doing some track work i i've done enough track work in my life if if i was in like still in washington dc and like i had my road running club yeah i'd go join them for track on tuesdays but like am i gonna go drive 15 or 20 minutes to the moab track to do speed work by myself whilst i'm like 
teenagers are hanging out <laughs> no. in the parking lot. Like you've got other things to do, like no. chase, chase mice out of the office. Oh man, I got I got a mouse problem, <laughs> and there's not a mouse problem, but a snake problem. <laughs> yeah, that's can't right. <laughs> if you, so if you don't know what we're talking about, you got to check that out. <laughs> Brian Brian's got this pet snake now. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah, Mr. Bull. <laughs> Mr. Bull. <laughs> well, and I kind of figured out where he came in when. We had a, did some renovations at our place this past winter, but a couple of the, the D logs, sort of a log cabin y type construction, some of the D logs right. on one corner had sort of rotted out, and somebody replaced them really well, but there was a, <laughs> we didn't, it hadn't been like rechinked or anything, so right. there was like a half inch or one inch gap between that and like my door jam, and I had never noticed that before. And when I was kind of like cleaning my office, I think last Saturday or Sunday, I noticed, oh, I can see daylight from inside my <laughs> office. So that's maybe where the mice are coming from. Right. And I literally been catching one a day in my rat zapper. And, <laughs> like every night there would be one dead in the rat zapper. And I'd have right. to eat the next night. Oh, there's another one. <laughs> and then, yeah, the night I was, or the, the last night I was home, it must have been Saturday afternoon or Sunday afternoon, whatever. I was like, cleaning up the office and I see this come back into my office and see a snake <laughs> and I'm curling up. In a, a pile, like sort of casual shoes, yeah. and I pick one up at a time using a broom to like go into the shoe and <laughs> put that on top of a table, and I get to the second to last shoe, and oh, the bull snake or whatever it was is in the shoe, and right. I, it's too heavy to almost like pick up with. The <laughs> it looked like it was a big snake. It was uh, like I don't know, two, two and a half feet. Like it was, a, or oh, whatever. Come on, you, you could have said four at least. Yeah, right? At least four. All right, thank you, because <laughs> it looked big. It's a snake. And then, yeah, so I eventually got that outside. <laughs> He just followed those little tasty treats inside. Totally. It's like leaving a bunch of like goo chomps or whatever, like <laughs> laying out for the ultra runner. You know, like, Where do I go? Like, the next one. By the way, any of those, like if you have a rat zapper, the little shoes from the various nutrition companies are great because yeah. you just throw in, they keep smelling like food. Yeah. Then you just dump out the mouse, throw the chomp back in, and <laughs> it's reusable. Oh, man. It is like. <laughs> I'm sure the nutrition companies <laughs> yeah. don't want that. As their marketing ploy, but it might work. It might work. It might work. If you got, if you got, if you opened up a, bu- a bag of some sort of energy chews on your run, and like they've gone stale, like, yeah, yeah, you can find a new use for those. There you go. <laughs> mice love them, <laughs> <laughs> and then we would know. And right? then the snakes love the mice. So. Yeah, that's right. It's then a, mongoose. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> it's a circle of life. Ricky right? Ticky Tabby <laughs> coming yeah, Ricky in. Ricky Ticky Tabby. That's too much. So. I'm oh, sorry, it's too much. So you, you've done the I Run Far thing, let's say say five years ago. If yep. you if you were to look back five years, where you're at today, what would your what would your thought be five years ago, knowing you are today? Would, is this something you thought it would be? Is it bigger than you thought it would be? I mean, wh- I guess it's bigger than I thought it would be. It's probably more international than I thought it would be. It's yeah. probably more race coverage than I thought there would be. Like those are probably the aspects that are most different. Um, right. By the, I don't know, about five years ago, if you go back six years ago, I'd say it's more work than I thought it would be. <laughs> uh, it's funny because like, when I left my job, like, I was publishing three articles a week. I was writing them. Like, right. I was doing a little coaching, but like, like, that was it. And there was a lot of free time. And then right. over the years, that free time has disappeared. Totally went away. And then like, yeah. the sleep went away. It, like, those were the dark years, like right. when the sleep went away. Like, last year, I made a conscious decision to get back to at least like deep normal sleep and like right. it's different like if it's a couple of days before a huge race in, in yeah. the night of a hundred mile or that kind of stuff and that's okay like right that's life but, but that like chronic it wasn't like chronic yeah. four hours a night because i had to get more done that was back with, like when you were living in park city i remember that kind of specifically yeah that you was were, the, the park city ma- years were dark years. you were making this a conscious effort to push something <laughs> out every day of the well, week back yeah then, and right? there was a lot like we were writing a lot more there i yeah, was running were, a lot more were. and then you guys were kind of like the, trying to get the website kind of under wraps, and I remember your Mike Mike Place right was helping yep. out a bunch That's of that. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So I remember those days. Yeah, I was like oh, Atticus man. Coffee Shop. I remember the yeah. first time I went there after you started going. Like, yeah, this is where he calls his office. This is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. I was back in my office on Tuesday <laughs> afternoon. Good old Atticus. Uh, right. Tea and coffee up in uh, in Park City. So so I got to share because it's still one of my favorite stories. All right. So all right. A few years ago. Uh, when I was working with the Pearl Zumi Ultra Running Team, mm-hmm. we did a. <laughs> <laughs> we did. A wow, <laughs> we're going there. <laughs> yeah, we are. So we did a what do you call them? Retreats, team get-togethers. You know, so we had the team come in. So there was like Scott Jaime, where was this at? Timothy Olson, Boulder, okay, Darcy Africa, Becky Wheeler, um, and Brian. He came and stayed at me and Scott's cabin, right? Mm-hmm. Oh man! And so one night we go out for a nice dinner with the Pearl Zumi company, the team. 
And then, well, let's go out after and, you know, have a few drinks, get together. Yeah. So we did that. And then after we'd been drinking a little while, or these guys definitely have. I don't know if I did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're like, we're coming back like, we'll stop into this, you know, bar, have another drink. So we do that. And then we go back to the cabin. And then after Darcy does the worm. Yeah. Or yeah. Whatever, somebody yeah. was. Yeah, it wasn't me. No, it wasn't, wasn't, wasn't me. wasn't me. It was, it was Clarky. That's Clarky. Oh, Nick Clark. Let's blame it on Clarky. Nick Clark was there. So, yeah. so we get back to the, <laughs> on our way back to the cabin, someone's like, oh, we should go up the flat iron. Was well, like, what, it was green. It was green, green Mountain. Let's go up Green um, Mountain. But mind you, this is March, I believe. Yeah, it was oh. March. Which, it was, there snowing, was snow. Still? Well, the snow would have been okay. The ice wasn't yeah, so oh. cool. <laughs> so, we, so we go, everybody go change. Let's get in our gear. Let's everybody go to the top. Change. So we all go change. What time of night was this? It was dark. After tequila time. Oh, that's yeah. a different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was after tequila time because Jaime was with us. And so I'm spilling the beans. Yeah, but yeah. then we go up, and so we were like, oh, we, we'd be nice to drink a beer on greens, right? Oh, my gosh. And so who decided, who was the, I mean, the champion, right? Yeah. Brian filled his vet backpack oh, with beers, nice. canned beers, right? Canned I mean, there beers. was like six of them. I'm not kidding you. One was a big one, too, like yeah. an oil can of Foster's or something. <laughs> and so we go up, and first it was icy, and, of course, Timothy's with us. He doesn't have a shirt on. It's March. It's cold. <laughs> <laughs> and so we go on our way to Greens. There's a cop that stops, and yeah. so we're hiding in the bushes because we don't know if we're even supposed to be there. We go to the top of Greens, and we're hanging out. It's a beautiful night. We had a great time. Then right. we run down the road. And the whole, no, when we got to green, no one wanted a beer. So Brian carried all the beer to the top <laughs> and <laughs> ran it all the way back. To, and the, I remember at the top, he's like, no one wants a beer? No <laughs> <laughs> and it was, it was like Aww. one of my favorite stories. So we got back, and then the worst part was the next morning, there was a photo shoot, and I was in charge Aww. of the team, and yeah, everybody looked. Really nasty. Oh, Debo is there. D no, that's your. Right. Oh man. Every, everybody looked like crap, and it's like Eric. What? What's going on? I'm like, I don't know. I told I them to know. get to bed early. I don't I know what they did last night. Told them to drink the beer on top of green, but they didn't. <laughs> that was my best. Brian took all the beers to the top and brought them all the way back down. That to reminds the me of a uh, Timmy Olsen wearing the shrug on shirt. Oh, like I the, the PI shrug. That. that was a good. That, that was, was a good look. Good. So the PI had a shrug. It was no top. It was just sleeves. For women that wear that wear women that wear tank tops. What was that called? So we called it a. We we called it. We call it jack -arf. the jack arf. Yeah, it's like a jacket scarf. <laughs> the jack arf. <laughs> but yeah, Timothy put that on with no shirt. He squoes into one, you know. Yeah. And he, he looked good. I'm sorry, Timothy, he looked good in that. But that was that was a great experience. Like Ashley Nordell, I think, was wearing yeah, it. And then, then right. it went over to Timmy and it never uh, left. Uh, we it know stretched who. out a little <laughs> bit. You know, it stretched out. <laughs> Timmy's got some guns. It stretched out a little bit. Uh, but yeah, that was one of my favorite. My favorite was Owen Brian comes uh, knocking on the door of the cabin. Hey guys! You know, <laughs> so we come in, we're having beers and that night oh, was just a man. blast. So he came to cover the, the team that week, and that was right. a good time. But I know that got off topic. That's one of my favorite stories. Well, that, that's a good the best st stories are off topic. So. They really are. They are. Kinda, and I had to make sure, and I didn't write it down, so I'm like, I, I, I had totally forgotten that. about that. Wow. <laughs> but we got a big topic we want yeah. to talk because you're you're you've been in it for a while. You've, been you've seen the growth. You've been around the world covering this. We talk about it all the time is like the growth of the sport. The sport. Yes. It's growing. There's been articles written, peoples, you know, from different generations of runners, you know, yeah. to, to where we're at today. There's races every weekend, every corner of the world, everything else. Where Where's the sport going? Is it in, is it growing too fast? Is there, t is there too much corporation stuff involved that's taken away from those? The soul of the it. The soul right? of it. I would say in the U.S., the soul is not gone. Like, there's a couple races that turn into, you know— sporting events sort of as newsworthy sporting events. I mean, there's Western States and North Face 50 and a couple other, Lake Sonoma and a couple other races that have that additional aspect. A lot of them still have really cool grassroots type things. They're not, they still aren't the productions they are in Europe or yeah. Asia or South America. And I mean, like if you go to Lake Sonoma, yeah, there's a bunch of super fast runners and we're doing a couple interviews and that kind of stuff. But right. in the end, we're hanging out. Tropical John puts on a good party and like, <laughs> The next day, there's a wine tasting, and oh. I mean, like, hello. There's all, I mean, at a she she winery, but it's like a bunch of folks hanging out, drinking some wine, and having a bunch a, of ultra runners, like hanging, like, yeah. having a good time. It's like probably not anything different except that it's nice beer or nice wine than <laughs> we would have seen at the finish line of a race 15 years ago. And, right. Um, and then, if you want to get away from the big events, there are more grassroots events than there ever have been. And isn't that crazy? How many there are now? And Every even weekend. some of the ones put on by like. You know, you look at, there's been a growth of sort of race organizations. Like, right. you got 
Jim Skaggs here in Utah putting on a bunch of races. Chris Martinez puts on a bunch of races in Moab. You got Era Vipa yeah, down Jamil. in Arizona. You got Matt Gunn. You got his. yeah, Matt Gunn. You got yeah, Jim, uh, James Varner. And if you look, if you go to a James Varner race, yes, it's a it's an organization and he has people supporting him. But it's a damn good time. Like yeah. there's right. not not a corporate element. And like for a while, I was a little skeptical of that growth. Not not toward individuals, but like can someone keep the soul and feel of races if they're putting on five or 10 or 15 a year? And to a large part, people have, and okay. that's awesome. I mean, I haven't really been to a race that hasn't had that. I mean, I can't say that it doesn't exist, but all the indications are people manage to, like I've been to run the Bryce hundred K with Matt Gunn and he was putting already putting on a couple races each year and it felt like some awesome, like homegrown race. Yeah. And you can't, I, I can't complain about, there being too much corporate aspect like that. What do you see the the trajectory? Do you see it continuing to grow at the levels it's growing? Do you see it tapering? You do you see, see it contracting? I mean, I, I've see? seen it start to taper. Right. Yeah. The, to the growth start to taper, not for the sport to be, yeah. you know, Quality. getting smaller yeah. or anything like that. Um, it's just that like, for a couple years that it was Boom. felt like 50% growth a year. Or what, right. Just like in terms of core trail running and ultra running, super huge growth. Um, now it's sort of in the sustained, which is probably healthy for it to go through a period of like, Slow not down. even consolidation, but just like get it, you know, some time for things to sort out. Like right. if there are, you know, sort of growth of a couple races that weren't put on or whatever, like you let, let those sort out and let the knowledge go around the community and that kind of thing. And yeah, um, I don't know when it's coming out. The Born to Run movie is coming oh, out. Oh, that's right. Really? Uh, yep. Yeah. That's right. So who's in that? Who's in that? Matt I don't Damon? Know. Are you in it? No. Should be. <laughs> I think uh, there's time for them to reshoot. I am uh I'm not sure when it comes out. I tend not to watch running movies yeah. or running. Wait, is there actually running movies? Pre man. Oh, yeah. Come on. yeah, that's that's different though. <laughs> yeah, so it's coming out and I think that no matter what there's gonna as long as it's not a super crappy movie, like right. there's gonna be another bump. Well, because well, remember the when that book came out. The oh, run book. Cow. That's when things like that was got no crazy. that was it was Dean Carnazzi's book. Oh, yep, that's right. Uh, Ultra Marathon you know, Man. Ultra oh, Marathon yeah. Man, and then Born to Run came out, and that yeah. was like explosion. That was it. Boom. That was huge. Because and that, that's that when, was like lasting. Yeah. What, for what, years. What crack? I don't say crack me up. What was different about that book is there were so many people. It just seemed like your injury rate spiked for a while because people. Well, that were, was like that was like the, the five, fin- the five yeah, fingers yeah. thing. Yeah, that was that. Plus, you know, everybody all Barefoot's of a sudden wanted head. to run Leadville, where there was no qualifier, so True. the finish rate dropped. Even I remember seeing some. T- some statistics there. Yeah. yeah, you're right. I think that it'll be interesting to see when that movie does come out if something happens. It, like I said, if it's a good movie, oh. you might see some growth. Oh, you, yeah. Good luck getting into Any a lot of races. Yeah, <laughs> like, right. Well, I mean, because that's that's ob- I mean that's another subject. That's something we've seen, and to the most part, you'd think would fade a little bit is getting into a race lottery style, right? Because there's so many more races. But well, it depends it's on still, which race you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, but like still if you go back races. to like Squaw Peak, it used to be impossible to get into yep. that race. But back now when, you can sign up. Now you can like sign up a couple days before. before almost, right? Yeah, you could. I don't yeah. know when he cuts it off, but I remember looking at it the week before, or like as the cutoff date for entry op- right. or is approaching and. Yeah, yeah, you could get in. Yeah, yeah I remember years day, ago. Before, like, December. If you didn't have your, your stamp on the, the envelope that day. on December 5th, yeah. you, know, you weren't getting in. <laughs> yeah. Totally. So, I mean, you see a shift like that. I mean, and you see a shift in relative importance of races. Like, Wasatch still puts on a great race. They but do. there's been, I mean, they've decided to keep it totally grassroots and not yep. go the toward building an elite field, and, which is totally fine. Like, that's right. their that's direction. It. But, like, it be, used to be a sort of national race oh, where the yeah. where the... I don't know exactly who, but you know the, the Hal Kerners and the Scott Jerks right. or whomever the Chrissy Carls Males and would Mackies come to and, right, and face yeah. off again. And yeah. now it's, I mean, I forget maybe two years ago, like either the top five or top five of the top six were from like the Wasatch Front. Yeah, right? Northern I mean, yeah. and that, that's not a bad thing, but you see this switch and realignment. It's the well, swing, right? It's well, and especially when you look at like a hard rock, when you're not just pulling in. I mean, it's a lottery, so it's a little bit different. But you're pulling right. in some of you know. America's quote unquote best, but then you have these Europeans, Europeans that kill you coming and over, and everybody trying. coming over. So that's a that's a different field. That's a different that's a different ball you know? game, right? But yeah, I see I see what you're saying to where there's some ebb and flow to some of these races, especially right. timeline yeah. far as dates go, because yeah. now they're getting close together, so athletes have to choose. They do. Do totally. I want and this they one? have the especially at the front have a lot more choices because it doesn't really happen in the U.S. but abroad, folks are definitely like brought over, put up. I mean, not right. like they're paid an appearance fee or anything, but like sure. they get to go to La Palma and 
for Transvolcania, or they get to go to some random race in South America, or right. and, you know, old Trail Mount Fuji, or uh, I don't know, whatever. Like, there's just a lot more of that going on, whether it's from the sponsors or from the races. Um, this opportunity to travel, and that's they, these people don't get paid a lot. Like, yeah, that's a. Right. I mean, I think Sage has made the point a couple times that, yeah, the, the salaries, whether you know, from a different sponsors and whatnot, might not be a ton, but you get this lifestyle, yeah. right? Uh, that you get to. I mean, it's not a glamorous lifestyle, but no. it's a, a, a lifestyle of exploring for a couple years. Well, it's right? like one you choose, and it's you know, it's what you want to do, and you yeah. get a little yeah. help along the way. Hey, that's that's so, a bonus. So uh, it's well, hard not to say yeah, for those people not to say yes to like. Well, yeah, that's let's a, go that, check out. That's a Le that level. in France or go to right. Fuji or whatever instead of running Wasatch. Like that's at the elite level, right? But I mean, we're talking like so. Well, if we're talking like every day, Joe Smo runner like you and me. There's all so many people now. Like if if we compare the 22nd Street Trailhead now, oh, yeah. compared to five six years ago, it's crazy sauce how busy it is at well, five o'clock in the morning. Well, right. it's there's a boom. Explain to me five o'clock in the morning. Five yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so for you, well, you're probably working. It's almost the time still, you go to you're, bed. You're, you're, you're probably still working, but you know, for for us regular guys, we got to run them because there's so many stinking snakes, and we got to work. Yeah. Right. You, but then you also have because this happened with you is you get races like the Bear 100, which never used to fill. Oh yeah, same this thing. Year. This, and yeah. this filled up. Within like, a few months, it, like well, actually, because it's a like hard rock qualifier, month, it filled up, and there was fifty people deep on the wait list. Because it's a hard rock qualifier. Well, I can tell you yeah. exactly what day that happened. It was <laughs> Hard Rock 2000, <laughs> yeah. two thousand, two thousand fourteen. Yeah. yeah. Because I remember, thing like going into the race, thinking maybe I'll sign up for the Bear to get a qualifier for Hard Rock next, and, right. and for Western States the next year. Um, and I didn't do it before the race, and I get done reporting and like kind of wrap things up on Monday or Tuesday, and I go to enter, and I'm like. 53rd on the wait list. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. And it had been like, there were spots available the Wednesday before the exactly. race. Yeah. And yeah, so everybody I mean, got kind of that exposure. Everybody got the window and they're like, oh, I got to sign up now. But see, that's that's what I'm saying. That's like some of these big differences that there wasn't that issue before. No, in 2010, we didn't have that issue. But 2014 rolls around in a four-year time period, it's blown up, yeah. right? Well, even some of Matt Gunn's races that, he, that are next March are sold out. Already? Really? Yeah. I think uh, Monument Valley or Antelope Canyon, one of them's already sold out. just went online. I mean, the thing is, like, that happens, and we can get frustrated. Oh, we're not back in my day, we could, we right. could, we could get into this race <laughs> yeah. on yeah. Saturday morning. And, exactly. But there's so there are so many other new there cool are. races. Like, there is no reason to be frustrated about right. not getting to go do a race. Like, there's, some, there's one Sign up for else. El Vaquero Loco. Like, hey, go, we're, yeah. going, we're going there We're going there days. tomorrow. I mean, if I wasn't just coming off Hard Rock, I just saw Ty Draney, the race director, uh, I'd want to go jump in. Like yeah. It's such an awesome little race. It, it is. No one probably hurt out of like Utah, Wyoming, you know Idaho. He uh, he sold out way early this year for the first time. He did. Oh, I, thought like, you're gonna tell, like, I thought you were going to say Ty Draney sold out. I'm like, no, no, Ty yeah. Draney didn't. <laughs> he no. sold no, out. No, it's been bad. No, he's too pure of a soul. He <laughs> is. But yeah, I mean, but there are. There's those those cool races that are popping. But there's up so in many of those. Like, I mean, we, we've been so talking many. about like the Black Canyon 100K lately. Right. That's yeah. that's something. Have you been down there and checked that one out yet? No, I haven't, because it's the same weekend as another cool race, the Red Hot. Red Hot. Yeah. Exactly. Like, I'm not that's gonna leave my backyard, hometown. Right. The, Get away from the bull snakes and the mice for a weekend. <laughs> 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 they're they're curled up and cozy together. <laughs> come February. Yeah. 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 So one of the things that you know, so kind of back to the the growth of the sport is, you know, how can those people that are getting in? Yeah. Still kind of almost adhere to the 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 values and the ethos that we've come to appreciate right and that you've seen because you've been expe- you've definitely have been exposed to a lot more than we have mm-hmm. just going to going to silverton going to western states but also experiencing that european side of it which is you know it's a lot more popular over there than it is here for sure so how can that newbie that's getting into it how, how can they kind of you know follow along that good etiquette i'm looking across the chair i'm sitting at the couch looking at you two <laughs> i mean it's 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 you like running with other people. Yeah. Uh, it's, I mean, it's so really getting expo- like that, that mentor. It's almost. like, I got, I had that from Scotty Mills and Derek Carr and Tommy Nielsen and yeah. Gary Nippling and all the Virginia happy trails crew and a, and a, and a ton, ton of others. Like when I first started. Right. And they inculcated me into the sport. Like it's awesome. Yeah. And that's, I mean, the same thing happens at hard rock. And like one of the reasons there's this tiered format yeah. is, it's right. so wild and so remote yep. and so fragile a landscape that you right. really force that trickle down of knowledge and 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 fellowship uh, and stewardship right uh, down. And I think we can do that the same thing on an individual level. It's just you see those people at the trailhead, 
you don't know him. It's right. 5 a.m. Say, hey, do you want to, my name, you know, my name's Joel, my name's Eric, let's go for a run. Like, but we don't say that to the girls at 5 a.m. Yeah, we, we just hide in the bushes until they take off. We're, we're we afraid go. that, that uh, they're <laughs> going to catch us. <laughs> yeah, they're faster than they're we are faster anyway. Us. <laughs> so, but, like, it's, yeah, but, but you, it's, it's hard to take that leap, but uh, yeah. to bridge that, to, ah, these are new folks on the trail. Right. They got their, their brand new shoes, and yep. they got their, their, I don't know how many miles intense a, a tri- Iron Man is, but they got that sticker on the back of their car, and they're coming <laughs> to hit the trails now, and right. 140.6, I don't know. <laughs> it's something uh, like that. Uh, That's a long got, way. <laughs> the bike's a long way. Kona, That's a long so, way, but, I guess. Anyway, um, yeah, I think it's really important to, I mean, you guys also have an extra voice in being a podcast, and, yeah. and with I Run Far, we try to, to share those values, and we have a lot of sort of editorial content. It's like we have a lot of instructional yeah. stuff and gear reviews right. and that kind of stuff, but having the folks who either are new or have been around, like sharing their views and thoughts of the sport publicly, right. whether it's a controversial issue or just their love of the sport and what right. it means to them and that it's more than just them and it's like about a community sharing that publicly right i think is important because the other people can read it and be like oh it's yeah those things are important to this community that i'm becoming a part of to make it sustainable because one of the things that we've been talking about lately is there there's certain generations of trail runners right mm-hmm. so you know we we were talking with with Chrissy, Chrissy yesterday, Chrissy and Mel. she's kind of Chrissy's kind of like that second generation. I was just to say because Chrissy and I started at the same exact time. Yeah, yeah. You're, we're Gen two. Yeah, yep. Gen two. Exactly. So are we. We're Gen two. <laughs> Gen we, three is right now. And well, I think it's almost Gen four. four yeah. We're yeah. getting close to it, especially oh, like man. think of like the new kids on the block. Wamsley. Well, not not, not the band, but yeah. yeah. Uh, I'd rather not. You just yeah. dated yourself. <laughs> 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 but yeah, like Wamsley, he's like Gen four, right? Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Um, or Hayden that, Hawks or whatever. Yeah, right? everybody that's Andrew getting Miller. into the sport because they're seeing that right now. There's been this core group of people that have helped build it up to this point. And that core group of people, they have great stories. Oh, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And that's one thing that I want to do going forward for the next you know, several months or through this year is get those stories available and out there. So that new group that's coming in that's being inspired by Wamsley, by, by Hayden, they, they can know that story. Because yeah. there's something valuable to be taken away from that. Well, because there's, I mean, it's, I love hearing the stories from, you know, a long, I mean, I'll say Gen 2, Gen 1. Yeah. Even, you know, about, we had somebody on talking about the gear they had back 20 years ago. Oh, yeah. Or right? like, talk, talk to Bryce Thatcher about carrying a, yeah. an apple, yeah, yeah. a glass apple juice yeah. bottle up the Teton. Yep. Yeah. Is that the Teton right? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, but that's, exactly. But <laughs> that's the stuff we talk about, too, is like, I mean, there's recovery, there's nutrition, there's gear, there's shoes, there's, I mean, you name anything in the sport right now. Back then, I mean, I, I joke Back about then it. Back like, didn't have anything. Yeah, you didn't. You had your Chuck Taylor Converse, you know, whatever it might well, be. But yeah. uh, they, they were running Nike. They, they had running That's, shoes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they had running shorts. Air, air yeah, not technical. It was all road-based back yeah. then, yeah. right? But that's, that's um, what, like, with your stuff, I mean, you mentioned before, like, the uh, Luke Nelson just did a uh, – Write up for you guys on I Run Far about yep. being responsible for yep. yourself. Yeah, it was. I wouldn't say it's controversial. I know Luke thought it would be, but yeah, I think it, it resonated, was. especially with some of the Gen two, Gen three, whatever. Because like, no, this is how it should be. And right. it's interesting you mentioned like the. So let's say Gen three. I'm gonna like throw out some names. Maybe it's the. Some of them would be the, the David Laneys and the Alex Varners right. and like I'm, I'm trying to like calling out some names from like the Nike team who right. these are people coming from a road running background. Right. Who a lot of people were really fearful of, Oh, these guys are going to come in here and be right. Not anybody specifically, but like there's all these new folks, young right. road runners. They're going to be dicks or not yeah, respect exactly. the community or they're just doing it for the money. They don't right. like the trails. And then like you follow them and you're like these dudes do this for the same reason we started yeah. doing it. They exactly. might have started a couple years earlier and they're hell of a lot faster, yeah. but like there's good, that good genuine love like, trail. Yeah. yeah. And I, I have if that's ever not bubbled to the surface quickly, you end up not seeing those people for very long. Yeah. Like right. anybody who's in their second or third seasons running, like yeah. they're not doing it because they're trying to do X or Y. They're doing it because they want to be on the trails. Yeah. Right. Like, it's not about making money. <laughs> Heck no. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no one's gonna make as much money as Iron Far does right now. Woo! <laughs> nice call out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I you wonder if Smith's pe- hiring. I'm you see his <laughs> pest control? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Me and a stick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, I mean it's true though. I mean it's just that that stewardship and being it, trail running is not something you can do because everybody's doing it. Like you said, you might last a season two, maybe I don't know, maybe not more than that, but you got to right. be in it for the right reasons. You do. And it's that mentorship because I remember when I first got into it for me, it was Jaime and Chrissy and 
you know, Darcy. I remember going to Hard Rock, and I remember seeing some of these people. I was in awe. They were like superstar movie stars to me at the yeah. time, you know. And then you find, you talk to them, like, wait a minute. They're just like down to They're earth. Cool. Good cool people to out. be around. You but know, I think that steward, like the, the community and stewardship and bringing that along is important. Like, I just got an email from somebody on the Wasatch Front today talking about like, some of the sort of shenanigans that are going in on the Wasatch Front right yeah, now, yeah, like we, we've heard of those, yeah, people like L- leaving trinkets, leaving trinkets, and like stuff summit. on the summits or on, along the trail, and like yeah. that. Uh, I'm not afraid to say that's just not cool. Like, okay, yeah. you want to do that? Like, leave something on your buddy's windshield. Under, like, <laughs> like, I mean, like yeah. something like that. Like, yeah. if somebody doesn't pick it up, if somebody forgets it, that's that's trash. The and wind, that's the wind and that's, blows it. We talked about that, on and the way it's down like today. leave no trace, and like yeah. I'm gonna be doing something on leave no trace, like just reading about this. Like it's something like it's the kind of stuff we try to put out there right. for the community, like yeah, like those educational pieces, whether it's to keep people safe or keep the trails in good condition right. or that kind of stuff. Like it's hard. The same thing goes for running in the mud. Like if you ha- if there is a puddle on like a route, you're supposed to run straight through it. Right. If the entire route is muddy. Stay the hell. Like, go on the roads for a day. Like, you're not going to die. No. Like, you're not going to get roditis. Like, (laughs) roditis. I like that. I like that. No, I mean, and that's, and that's what, that's why we kind of go back to that is because there is a, a, a larger number of people hitting the trails that there maybe are. not know that, and you're sharing and, yeah, it. Yeah, I don't think that they're any more irresponsible or any more careless. It's just educated sh- education. Yeah. Like, and if you see somebody do it, don't be a dick and like, don't be shame mean them. to them and right. don't shame them and like, hey, can you have you thought like. I know you're leaving this for a friend, like, but have you thought about like X Y Z? Yeah, like <laughs> think about somebody else sees that, then they're gonna think about leaving something. Exactly, there it's kind of like there's a huge problem down in I live in outside Moab and down in the desert southwest, uh, people building cairns. Yeah, and they're all over, and it leads people to go walk off trail. Yep. It, I mean, it's just not dangerous. part of the natural landscape. It's dangerous, like. Don't do it. Like right. the people who build Karen, like there are people who use Karens for specifically for trail marking. Right, that's, <laughs> that's good. Yeah, like it's kind of don't a, like. If you're I mean, it's it, fun. And like, and like it's, none of it's out of like malintent. No, yeah, they're not being malicious. No, not at all. They're like, just going to take an but, Instagram picture, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And like, but you might be causing somebody the like you said walk off trail. Yeah, and in the Southwest, you have the cryptobiotic soil, and yep. that stuff Ooh. doesn't regrow. It doesn't. I mean. Not for a very long time. Yeah, and the same in the alpine environment. Like, yep. like, especially in a high-use area like the Wasatch or the, the, the Front Range or something like that. Like, right. If I'm up in the super back country in the San Juans, in sort of like grassy areas, yeah, I'll do cross-country stuff. Right. But that's super dispersed. If, you, if you're in a populated area, like, yeah. stay on it. the trail. Exactly. Yeah. Like Communal trails be, are not designed. They, they erode. They, right. Yeah, they're, they're bad news. Like, yeah. I think Tim's got that problem. And someone's got to take care of them. Yeah. You know? or, yeah. And that's, that's, there's no money there to take care no, of them. It's just no groups of volunteers no. Which stuff. is interesting. Like, that brings up a separate point. If we're going to be on the advocacy side. Of, yeah, let's I don't do think it. this is like the direction any of us thought we were going to go in today. But like, in the advocacy side, if you have the opportunity, go work on trails. Yeah. Right. There's, like, there's, there's a whole lot. of The mountain biking community kicks butt with this. Yeah, like, yeah. trail runners, we're... I know we do some like for service, for races. for races. We do some other like some other people are, are very involved. So there are some. That's not everybody, but like, we could do more. Well, yeah. that's super gratifying, and it is. <laughs> it really it is. is. I remember running the Hard Rock course, and I was at mile ninety, and I was just at the lowest of low energy wise. But I remember like going apart, going across trail that I cleared a week and a half earlier. Yeah, right. like, like rehabilitated, and it felt awesome. And I remember going out of Uray at mile. 48, like coming up the Bear Creek Trail, where I'd work with Rick Trujillo on the trail. And like, it was super gratifying to see the stuff I did this year, see the stuff I did last year. And like, yeah, That's especially cool. if you can do that in your, your community. Like, right. I, I would not suggest building trails yeah. unless no. you're under the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's bad. Like, right. or even like doing heavy repairs on trail without yeah, like there's a proper somebody way. that knows yeah. what they're doing and how to bank the trail and how to drain water. Right. But if you're running along an established trail that's part of a system, like I'll take little hand loppers. Right. Yeah. Like take if you if you're just out on a normal run, kick the damn branch off the trail. Oh, yeah. We, we, we do that all the time. That's like, fun. I mean, if it's not like a rock embedded in the trail, it's a rock that's clearly rolled down. Yeah. Just give just it a little flick. Like, do a little kick. Do, do a little, little soccer, soccer kick. kick. I do it all the time. Like, yeah. Corey Johnson told me that one. When I first uh, first started trail running, my first coach, I remember him uh, when I was running cross country in high school, would like just go along and like do a little finger flick with two fingers, breaking off like the little shrubs that was like kind of starting to encroach in the trail. Nice. Like, didn't, didn't need clippers or anything, right. but if you just kind of nip the, the limb in the bud, right. like 
if you do that on every one of your runs, like a couple times, like yep. you maintain the trail. Like I like that. And it's it's good. And I pick mean, up that garbage along the trail. Yeah, yeah, like, that's huge, that right? really feels good. Like that's awesome. You gotta stop for that. two seconds. Yeah. Like Really? Yeah. Your day ruined by that? Nope. Dude, when you get to our age, stopping for two seconds is it's not money. a bad thing either. Sometimes no. I'm like, God, I hope money. a piece of trash shows up here. Somewhere <laughs> so <you can> stop. <laughs> You're like throwing stuff yeah, out of your exactly. pocket. But, I mean, Eric, what you got over there? Throw that down. Yeah. Part, <laughs> part of the gratifying part, like trail building, me and Joel do a lot of trail work and in our community and stuff. But I remember building brand new trail, like kind of where we live. And my yes. favorite part was taking my kids and my wife up there. Yeah. Later on, I'm like, yeah, it was part of this. And you're leaving something and setting that example for the people ahead you and it's always fun too to bring new people to build trail because it's fun to see their look on their face when they're like they, get, oh. they experience they're like this takes a lot of work yeah right and a it's a little bit new appreciation right. for what goes and it's on. really hard to learn how to do that yeah um i know imba like the oh, international yeah. mountain bike association like i said the mountain bikers do a dang good job yep. on, this on, a, on a national international personal level um but they do have some good courses and some of their trail building is geared toward mountain biking obviously yeah. but yeah. They also have great stewardship principles in yeah. general. Like yeah. you can learn how to build a trail that is going to be great for trail running right. by going to some of their, you know, short educational opportunities. Right. I yeah. mean, whether that's but short, like a weekend, yeah, that kind of thing. And that's some great information for anybody to do. Skip a little bit. Should we do? Should we kind of wrap this up and do a little quick session at the end? Yeah, well, I was going to even bring up Tim real quick. Is like, what's on? What's next for you? I mean, you travel okay. so much. I mean, what's next? Are you got any races coming up? Are you just covering them? Or uh, I got two races I'm covering this month. Uh, going to uh, Ultravasen in Sweden. I okay. covered that race last year. Mora, 90k, super fast. Jonas Bud won last year in oh, yeah. 545. Wow. 90k. He's fast. All wow. I mean, there's a like dirt road. That's yeah, crazy 545. fast. Yeah, wrap your head around that. Holy one. cow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we're talking like, I think it's just over like six minute pace and sh- like low, six minutes, six low. Nuts. So For yeah, that long, that's, that's nice. Hauling butt. That's nice. Uh, and then after that is UTMB. Yeah. No. So, um, might be at the rut. Don't know about that. I'm signed up for a 250 mile race in the Gobi desert that I, so the one I did last what? year at the end of September. Awesome. Kind of got to <laughs> see if that fits in work wise. Uh, I might be going to ultra trail Mount Fuji. I don't know. Right. Um, I love talking to people like this when they're talking to this and me and Joel, like, yeah, we're going to Wyoming tomorrow. Yeah, we're going to Wyoming. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go to El Vaquero Loco. <laughs> What's next? Yeah, Dos like años de <laughs> amor y polvo. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yep, exactly. No, but that race is cool though. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah. I mean, Vaquero Loco is like one of the it gems. It is. I mean, it's people like talk about, I know it's sold out this year, but like, how many people outside Idaho, Wyoming, and Utah know about El Bacero Logo? Maybe a couple of Coloradans. Yeah. But, like, it's, there's races like that everywhere. If you've never yeah. run, I don't, there's actually races I don't even want to say the names of because Off there's air. little, like, Off air. We'll talk about We call them the race that shall not be named. Yes. That's what we yes. use for those. I, we, we used to refer to that and on I actually tough have, way. like, once I, kn- I was going to say, I'm like, no. Yeah, don't, no. Well, yeah. I remember it, one, it was a few years ago, but I remember the first climb just right for the 50K of El Vaquero, Megan. I was right by Megan. She was running. She asked me, she goes, you've run this before, right, Eric? I'm like, yeah. And I was telling her about it. I'm like, my favorite part is when you head out to the turnaround and you come back, it's like you're on a different course, but you're on the same course. The yeah. Users. And I remember seeing after that, she goes, man, you weren't kidding. This is one. And she, this was a few years ago, but she was saying the same thing. It was one of her favorite looking courses. And All again, those high lakes are so cool. Yeah. Oh, totally. And, and the wildflowers are just nuts. Yep. Yeah. And I forget, I don't know the name of the mountain, but like, I remember going at, like, at sunrise looking to i think it was to the west but yeah because the sun would have been shining on this face and this right. mountain and it just lit up i actually think it's the i think it might be the opening photo in chapter one of our new book <laughs> right on <laughs> but no but like it's just like and it was just like me snapping a shot during a race like yeah it's just like this wah this is incredible yeah, yeah that's to cool. find those wah places they're all yeah. over like the wah the, moment <laughs> we're gonna hashtag that <laughs> wah. Wah. how do you spell that I, we'll figure it out <laughs> like later. we need a couple more beers and we'll figure that out all right, so where do you want to go, Joe? Well, should we do rapid fire? Real yeah, fast? we could do some rapid fire stuff for you that you don't know about. All right, I gotta, gotta loosen we'll, up. We'll, there, we'll, right? we'll we'll get you in there gently before we start getting I'll after throw you. Him, throw him an easy one. I'll throw him an easy one first. Um, let's go favorite race distance. Favorite race distance? I'm gonna go with 33k. Okay, so that's yeah. a that you know. Knowing all the 33Ks that are popping up in my head, I'm thinking Moab Red Hot. Yeah, that's pretty much <laughs> it. <laughs> it, it, it it's, it's hard, but it's fast, and it's, oh, it's it's not fast enough to be crushingly fast, but, yeah, it's over in, for me, two hours and 37 minutes, or, you know, plus or minus a couple seconds. <laughs> right on. <laughs> okay. Top, top two beers right now for you. Top two beers. Yeah. This should I don't be know. good. Oh. Yeah. I, I, Anything Gosa from Distill Brewing in Illinois. Okay. Oh, the Gose or Gosa style, Leipzig right. area, salty, sour, All right. awesome in the summer. 
and I really enjoyed the Baltic Porter at Avalanche Brewing in Silverton. Right. Nice. I was over there. Well, there's awesome. a couple I haven't been around, so that'll be good. The Illinois mm. one surprised me. Now we're going to spice it up. We're going to start getting after it a little bit. All right. Okay, so we got to get you going here. For for uh, let's let me give you a new one here. Ooh, yeah. Who who does everybody out there need to keep an eye on running wise? It's about that's going to kind of make some noise. Male, female. Whew. I'm not putting you on the spot. You know everyone. So who who do you think? Who do we got to keep an eye on that's going to kind of make some noise? That is an excellent question. I I think in part because we haven't seen him enough. Diedrich Hermanson, I mean, he was second at Western States, but still kind of under the radar because he's he's from overseas, so you kind of don't like think of them but uh as much but i think you're gonna see some more good results from him okay. someone like hayden hawks yeah, i mean yeah. like i haven't met him yet but like dude just shows up and crushes <laughs> and speed goat yeah and he's run some fast like he i think won the whole series for the la sportiva mountain cup if i'm not incorrect i think he won jupiter peak he won like jupiter peak someone sub 150 like yeah just yeah just insane. dance through there so no like problem. he's a good kid too. he's a good kid yeah and i think on the international front like the women's side uh ida nielsen she uh, won Transvolcani this year. She was okay. second at uh, at Ultravasen last year. Uh, she actually ran for, I think it was Northern Air- Arizona University. She was definitely like a steepler here in the States. Oh, and okay, yeah. Comes from a, like a great cross-country running. Kind of background. Max King Got injured for, like, I think she actually had a stress fracture in her hip and didn't run for a while. Right. Like, year, like five years basically took off. And wow. now is back. And like, That's when cool. you have that, t- and it comes from a really talented family so, right. of athletics. So, okay. Right. Yeah. So, we need to know your guilty pleasure on your iPod. Guilty Some pleasure on my iPod. Running mu- music. Running oh, I thought we were going to talk about just guilty pleasures on my iPod. Okay, so that's a two-part <laughs> que- that's a, that's a two question, by the way. <laughs> well, we're just going to go with, like, apps and information. My guilty pleasures on that side go... Uh, watching, they're looking at the Phillies on my MLB uh, TV app. Oh, that's not juicy enough. And yet. Uh, <laughs> I, I read Bloomberg.com before bed. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> okay, now music-wise, uh, what's something you're not going to? Oh man, give me a little Taylor Swift or oh, some no. like. Oh, I like. I that. need some like cheesy girl pop, like, <laughs> like uppy, uppy stuff, not like yeah. sappy stuff. Just give me a little like Spice Girls. Like, somewhat, <laughs> No. I mean, if you wanna. I mean, <laughs> 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 that's too good. No, if you want to throw it back, yeah, sure. I could be like, <laughs> all right. Like something that's like upbeat, a little quick. Yeah. Um, oh my goodness, Rory Bazio turned this, yeah, turned this on, turn me on to this one. It's the. Uh, oh my god, I'm just totally blanking on the name. Um, it's okay. We'll get the text at three in the morning. It's, it's gonna come to my head, and I'm <laughs> yeah. just gonna start singing it. Yeah, uh, yeah boy. <laughs> oh, I love it. I don't know the official name of the song, but if you sing it. Come on. No. <laughs> this will be off but the record. But by the end of the interview, we're going to get this. We're going <laughs> to yeah. hopefully Bri- this doesn't Brian's get Brian's pulling stand. out his phone right now to try to figure it out. This is awesome. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, so going to the next question. But we're going to come back to the I Love It song. Okay. Yeah. So, you, so you've written two books. Yeah. Someone's going to write a book about you now, your life. Ooh. Okay. What's the title of the book? It can't be I Run Far. It no. can't be Relentless Forward Progress. No. Either. No. It's oh, the man. name of the book. It doesn't have to even be about running. Just your life from beginning to, to wherever. Shoulders on the shoulders of giants. Ooh. Ooh. Come on, that's too deep. That is Okay, <laughs> <laughs> we, we gotta give him a quick pause so he can figure out the song. Oh, I'm answering. I'm not so you, pausing. You, yeah, I know, that's firing. rapid fire. He's, he's multitasker. You can he tell. Can, he can. The last thing that just came up my safari is I, I'm gonna go to Brewies and watch Suicide Squad. I can't make the six o'clock show myself. <laughs> I think that's tomorrow. <laughs> and the OR show with some wings, some beer, and crappy DC <laughs> comic <Comics>. universe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's a movie about you. Okay. Oh yeah. Movie's got, coming out. It's not Born to Run. It's a new movie coming out. Who plays Brian Powell in the movie? What actor? I don't know the guy's name, but it was the guy who was the older Pete from the Adventures of Pete and Pete on Nickelodeon. <laughs> I got no clue where that <laughs> even I, is. I don't even know what that <laughs> no, is. No, no, no. There's this 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 uh, show that was basically it was like a hilarious show based in like the suburbs of New Jersey. Right. Uh, that was a kid my age. In, probably was based like an hour from where I was from and the kid oh, oh. looked a hell of a lot like me <laughs> like to the point where like me and my little next door neighbor went it was the adventures of Pete and Pete and I was the elder Pete and the other my little next door neighbor Timmy uh, Parker was uh, the younger the Pete, next so. one all right and it, but it was great because it had um, so many awesome musical guests it had Iggy Pop like oh, Michael nice. Cypher from R.E.M. like B-52s yeah. wow. and I forget like others like it was just like this like 
like sort of alt rock, like all star lineup in this kid sitcom. Huh. Like, I'm gonna have to check that so out. So the, the song is "I Love It" featuring Charlie XCX. Oh, I like it's that. It's by Icona Pop. That is a okay. good song. All right, I know right. what song you're talking about. That's I good, like Charlie XCX. That's yeah. a good one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it gets in your head. It does. All right. So. All right. So Godzilla or King Kong? Oh, he's got it going. It's just like a perfect it. running song. It's upbeat. It's happy. Yeah, I could and it says, I don't care. Like, it doesn't matter what's going wrong. And that's all it ever just says. Pretty much. And yeah. this is what Brian, he listened to at Hard Rock going to Pandy's laying on the wildflowers looking <laughs> at the stars. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm laying here and I don't care. <laughs> yep. That's awesome. Well... I think we're done. Yeah, I mean, we, uh, first of all, thanks for taking yeah, the time. Oh, it's I know a pleasure. You're, you're I'm so busy. glad we finally got to meet yeah, up. I know yeah. you're, you're world traveler, busy, and of course we're driving back and forth from Leighton to Ogden all the time, so we're busy, and, which is like <laughs> <laughs> 10 miles. Oh, well, here, here's a quick question from you. <laughs> oh, okay. It's a personal question. Uh oh. What's better, Leighton or Ogden? Oh, oh Ogden. Ogden. That was. <laughs> we didn't have the. We didn't have the thing. Apparently, about that. that's not a hard question. No, we're, we're I've never spent time in Leighton, so yeah. yeah just I've been in Ogden. That's saying something about Leighton. Yeah. yeah. What's funny <laughs> is that on Strava, he's got a couple of segment records in Ogden. No, really? How's that possible? I don't know. I'm Every, like never there. It was from like when Strava first came out. All right. Yeah. I'm gonna have to check those out. You gotta check those out. Somebody's gotta beat them. Yeah, that's right. Oh man, I guess the, the challenge just got laid down. That's right. Maybe well, whoever maybe whoever breaks that segment, you can find one and they can get a, win a copy of the book. Yeah, well, so we're there bringing we that on. <laughs> we'll, you'll figure out how to win the book. But no, yeah, th- right. thanks for thanks for coming on. I know you're busy. This has been a great show. We've been looking forward to it. Thanks for all you do for yeah. all of us, right? Oh, I mean, us, us included. Because I, I think that's really that's heartfelt. It is because you've done, you've done a lot amazing. for us. I mean, we talk about it on our runs. We try things. We read. I mean, articles at AJW, you and Ian and you, you, the slew of people, Megan. Yep. That you have, I mean, it's great perspective. The consistency is yeah. crazy. You know, and you guys have a standard, and I think that's the yeah. biggest thing. There's no. a standard. That that's what. That's honestly, I'm glad you guys see that and feel that because that's one thing we really push for. Really, the quality of the writing is just consistent every single day. It's just day, a, it's just a high standard of everything right. there is, and so yeah, we want to thank you for sure. And yep. I know, you know, our listeners would do the same thing. We appreciate it. Keeps us engaged having fun yep and again thanks for taking the time yeah we don't want to keep I hope you we get to do this again sometime absolutely yeah, you know we, well as soon, soon as we get that That's invite good. to moab me and joel are some yeah, pretty good mousers down. run the red hot uh <laughs> red hot moab races and if i gotta make a suggestion here yeah. run the 33k yes not the 55 I've, I've done All the right. 55k three or four times 33k once and i i like that 33k <laughs> yeah. course <laughs> Yeah, you actually get to like run on the slick rock yeah. rather than be like, I hate this. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it'll tear you up pretty quick. So, yeah, thanks again, everybody. Don't forget to check out I Run Fire. We're gonna have some cool links to some stuff. Yep. Buy the books. They're yep. like for real. I mean, we have, and we're gonna have three copies that we're gonna be giving out. Um, you'll hear about the contest here in a bit. Um, but thanks again. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Take sorry, care. Enjoy so- El Avocado Loco. Yo, yep. we will. Sorry, we uh, took you away from Suicide Squad tonight. Oh, maybe I just have to go watch the eight thirty showing. <laughs> Take care, guys. Bye bye. Right, thanks. Okay, we've got Where the Road Ends by Megan Hicks and Brian Powell. We have three books to give away for this contest here. Are you ready? On the Facebook post for this podcast, go ahead and comment on there the advice you wish you were given when you first started trail running. We'll go ahead and put your name in a hat, send out a book, Where the Road Ends by Megan Hicks and Brian Powell. But don't forget, you can also grab this on Amazon or their website at irunfar.com. So thank you for listening to the Trail Manners Podcast. We'd like to thank Brian for taking the time to join us today. We also want to encourage everybody to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Trail Manners or swing by the website at trailmanners.com. There you can pick up some of our gear or on our contact page, you can let us know what you want to see, who you want to hear, or if you want to be on the show. So until next time, this is Eric Manning with Joel Hatch reminding you, you don't get what you wish for, you get what you work for. Now go get it.